Entitlement, ego, and pride are killers for whatever your dreams may be because you cannot, you just cannot stretch your wings if you feel like, oh, it's going to come to me anyway because I deserve it. Choose not to live in a world of filters. Realize your mistakes. Set the foundation for your success. Get some wins. Knucklehead Podcast. Well, welcome to another edition of Knucklehead Podcast. You've got with you today, the Knucklehead. And I'm excited for you to spend some time with, with somebody who actually, they take pride in being a Knucklehead because they learn from it. They learn from those moments. They actually experienced the pressure, the stress, and were able to bounce back and has been out there kicking them until I'll take a name. So Patrick Burt, welcome to the show, buddy. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Feeling great to be on the show. Uh, <laughs> it's funny because I've actually seen you pop up all the time, but I finally finally got that friend request and got things connected. So, <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's funny how that works. It's like, uh, I know that name from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's because we have 300 or 400 <laughs> mutual connections. Jeez Ridiculous. Lady. It's like uh, it's like asking the uh, asking the pretty girl out to, to a, a prom date, knowing that she's going to say no. You're like, just 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 click the button. It's <laughs> click the button. No, either that or I just didn't didn't pay attention in the past. So anyway, I I appreciate you taking some time. I'm excited to have you on the show. One because you know, kind of to how you mentioned uh, on social media, that's how a lot of people interact uh, today, right? And it, it's good or bad. It's not it's not necessarily. Um, a, I don't want to classify it any certain way. It was interesting. I was listening to kind of a, a guru out there in the industry a few days ago, and he was talking about social media didn't really do anything. Facebook is not bad. You know, none of these platforms are bad. Mm-hmm. Just really what it does is it, it, it exposes you, right? So people, <laughs> people have always been a certain way. Now it's just out there for more people to, to see. Right. And, um, and so that, that, that creates a lot of pressure for people to, to want to try to be perfect, right? Because everybody yep, wants yep. to present you know, something versus what they actually are. There's always something going on behind the scenes. So it's crazy how this works. But anyway, uh, that's how Knucklehead essentially got our start. It's interesting, that story. In the workplace, there's there's so often that people want to try to to get along. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get along, except when it starts to create an environment that's not conducive for creativeness, uh, there's not an opportunity for for people to grow together and mm-hmm. test boundaries. And that's what was happening. Essentially, my, a, a woman was lying to the guy that I was working with. And when I confronted her about it afterwards, I, I texted my wife exactly how I felt about her. And turns out I was actually texting the woman instead of my wife. So <laughs> I call that a knucklehead moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the oh start boy. of knucklehead podcast. <laughs> so it's, it's, um, it, it, what's great about that, though, is is in that learning lesson, you know, I mean, the, the woman's birthday is here in a few days. and I'm going to text her happy birthday. It, it, it was nothing that she did wrong, right? It was all in my reaction. At the time, though, I was wanting to blame her for everything. And so there's kind of this propensity to go down this this victim mindset, so to speak, whenever adverse mm-hmm. or, or negative negativity happens. And, uh, and Patrick, I want to dive into that. Or excuse me, I kind of want to put a pin in that and then come back to it because you and I were talking just a few minutes ago about how this relates to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but tell people, I mean, tell people a little bit about you. I mean, tell people... Uh, about how you converted to being a Texan and and just a little bit about your story. For sure. For sure. So, oh boy. Um, so yeah, being a military family, as I said, a grandfather Marine, dad Marine, we moved around a little bit whenever I was growing up, but uh, settled down. I think it was like 2000 in, uh, what was it, in Galveston. Then we moved to Houston like a few months later, grew up here. And of course, I always grew up and I always knew I was going to be a Marine. So I'm like, Screw it. Let's do it. So third generation made it. Um, man, how I, how I transitioned into what I do now is a really funny story because I joined enlisted and I went through, I mean, I was a calibrator, super, the super pogue of the Marine Corps. So <laughs> <laughs> we had like AC units. For those listening, for those yeah. who, um, is uh, it's a, it's actually a term of, of affection, a term of endearment, so to speak. It's just like it's just like knucklehead, right? It, it means person other than grunt for those. Who, <laughs> um, so so I got into I got into that. Um, I wanted to do twenty years, but then I broke my arm, and then all types of crazy things happened. Oh, wow. But um, I came across a buddy from high school that decided to mentor me, and he was one of those people that like he says he's going to do something, and he does it, and he does it really well. Hmm. So he was, he basically came up to me and he's like, Hey man, how you been doing? You know, I I have an opportunity. You want to learn sales? And I'm like, well, 
me being, I don't know, I was like 21 day drinking in the barracks. Yeah, sure. Why not do something productive? So, <laughs> um, what else but, you gonna do, right? yeah, exactly. So I jumped into that, uh, really, really hit the ground running with sales, learned sales. And that was about like five, five ish years ago, four or five years ago. Um, really jumped into sales. Uh, and then of course I got into marketing organic SEO. Um, and I just started learning as much as I could, as much as I could. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, now I'm doing, uh, I'm doing ad campaigns, full ad campaigns. I have a whole team that I work with, uh, organic SEO sales consulting, like all types of craziness, but kind of how I got started was completely everything else in life by chance. <laughs> it just happened. It works? It's like, yeah. you joined, so you joined the Marine Corps wanting to be third generation, right? In, and I want to go back to something that you said, one, because I think it's, I think it's important to, to not gloss over. You talked about how your buddy who said that they were going to do something and then they went and did it. And then you noticed how well that they did it. So they were able to execute against whatever it is that they wanted to accomplish. I want to talk about that observation real quick. Mm-hmm. Was there, was there times that, that people had let you down or people had told you that they were going to do something and not follow through? Or did, uh, you notice, or did you notice that about yourself? And that's what stuck out about your, uh, about your buddy. It wasn't necessarily that like I've had people have that happen to me or have people do that to me. But the thing about it is like, you know, there's certain, a normal person, and I'm going to say normal, but like a normal person, you know, they say they're going to do something, you know, they, they push, they do it. But then after a certain point, it's like, oh man, this is really difficult. This guy, I mean, he could say I'm going to the moon and he, he'll be at the moon. Like, <laughs> It's, it's ridiculous how, how much drive I've never seen anybody with, with that a level of drive in a business mindset, especially at my age. Cause I was like 20, 21, you know, so 21. Cause I said I was drinking, but, <laughs> but yeah, so that was really impressive. And compared to anybody that I've ever encountered, I'm like, it, it's, it's, it was almost like this guy's a freak of nature. And so I'm like, yeah, I definitely want to jump on that opportunity. I want to learn. Did you learn by doing it perfectly the first time or? or oh, hell no. Everyone else, where, uh, you get a door slammed in your face. You get no um, down today. So a funny story, actually, my first sales call was actually not a sales call. It was a voicemail, actually. And I was still active duty. And so I was, I had this prospect and uh, I was calling him and it went to voicemail. And this is what I tell people whenever any, I can't do something, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't be good at it. My first call was so nervous. I was stuttering. I was, I didn't even get the point across. I didn't even portray value. I made up that somebody was calling me so that I could get off the phone because I was so nervous. I was so nervous and I ended it there, but now I'm doing cold calls. Like it, that goes to show that if you put your mind to something, even if you're so scared, and it's funny because I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm in the Marines. You like do everything, and then like this phone defeated me. One hundred percent. It's that's that's a that's that's actually a really good story because when you start talking about it, imagine imagine being that person listening to the voicemail. You know, oh just for God. a second, you're like, oh my. <laughs> Like you, you want to go, you want to go back and like report that person's telephone number to like some type of, For real. Site, you know For what real. I mean? Oh my so, gosh. Well, it's interesting how that experience, just that uncomfortableness sitting in that awkwardness, because <laughs> I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. You, Super awkward. <laughs> your heart just starts going, your palms get sweat. And it's important for sales folks that are listening, even entrepreneurs to a certain extent. Well, entrepreneurs that think that they're salespeople, Mm -hmm. it's really important to understand that there are folks that are significantly more skilled at whatever the, I don't want to say daily basic blocking and tackling, but there there are people who are significantly more skilled at facets of your business than you are. Mm -hmm. And as an entrepreneur, it's it's imperative that you allow those people to go through that failure (laughs) that, that Patrick was just talking about because it's the only way that they learn. It's almost like I call it, I call it almost like bumper lines. Most people are like, right, well, I can go bowl. Well, yeah. I mean, how much, how much more does your confidence go up in the beginning when you know that you have bumper lines? It's, <laughs> it, if you have bumper lines, then you know that you can't, you, essentially, you know that you can't fail. Or right. even if you were going to fail, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden what happens is the, that bowling ball starts to get a little bit straighter. And it gets, I mean, you may not hit a 300, that's fine, but you may get a strike accidentally. And then you start to experience some failure. All right, so Eric, you experience some wins. We call that here at Knucklehead, get some wins. But let's back up even two steps and understand what Patrick did. He wasn't a beta about the process. Don't be beta. 
right? <laughs> he actually put himself out there as alphas do. The important part is, is the action, the action steps that he took in order to really face that adversity, sit in that adversity and, uh, and experience uh, some breakthroughs. What's going on, knuckleheads? This is Chris Hoffman, CEO and founder of Vet Training Coaching and the host of the Ambitious Vet Podcast. Now, are you a, a knucklehead veteran out in the trenches right now, making a lot of mistakes, trying to get those wins, but are just feeling stopped, stuck in a specific area of life? I want to invite you personally, if you're listening to this, to come join an elite team of ambitious vets in the trenches together with one mission and one mission only, is to uncover the landmines that stop our daily momentum and our consistent results in our life, in any year of life that matter most to us. As Stephen Cullen, the knucklehead himself said, come uncover your performance gaps and execute on what matters most in your life. Spots are limited. If you're interested, the application process is free. Visit vettrainingcoaching.com and I hope to see you soon. But it didn't stop there. You, you got one breakthrough and you started experiencing some success, but the wheels kind of start to fall off the wagon a little bit, right? It sounds as if you had some goals that you made hit, but not maybe set some other ones that you could stretch yourself to. Right, right. So, I mean, sales, because I learned sales in a very, not unethical, that's not the word I'm looking for, unorthodox, I propose. So typically, you know, whenever you're learning a new skill, they, they always say envelop yourself in it as much as possible. And like, this is before I knew burnout was a thing because I worked from, you know, 6 a.m. to 11 at night every day, including Sundays doing sales. And that's one of the reasons why I'm, I mean, looking back, I'm super happy that I did that because I can compete with people that have been in sales for way longer than I have because I've did nothing but sales for like three years. But yeah, that burnout is real. (laughs) That is real. That is the real deal right there. And uh, one of the, one of the lessons that I learned is you, you work definitely is important. And, you know, learning those things, but you also have to take care of yourself. And that's something that I did not do. I did not do anything that was fun for me. I only focused on these skills. And while I might be really good at sales, that was a rough time. (laughs) So in your opinion, then, I mean, so there's a little bit of a a little bit of an age gap between you and I, right? Not, Mm -hmm. Not significant, but it's significant enough to where if you were talking to somebody who was interested in going into sales, who's let's just say 25 years old. And before they understand how markets change and they, mm-hmm. they understand that, you know, they're not clear on exactly what they want to do at 40 or 50 years old, but that really doesn't mean anything compared to what they need to be doing today. What advice would you give somebody who's 25 years old, who has this maybe risk averse mindset, or they feel as if they're, they're kind of owed something and they may not even understand that they have an oh, boy. mindset, but how that was, they- that was a problem I had actually. And I didn't even realize it. Um, I think the best advice that I could give anybody going into sales, it might not necessarily be a mindset thing. It might not necessarily be a sales tip, but if you go in one, expect to fail, like you have to, it, it, there's no way you just, there's no way that you can just go into sales and make wins. Honestly, the biggest thing that I learned in sales that I really want to pass on to everybody is if you focus on making a friend and make it a game it's so much easier. Like I I look at it like chess. It's almost addicting like in sales because it's like, oh, they say this, then I say this, then they say this, then I say this. And like you have the the task you're trying to complete. But yeah, as long as you're making a friend, it just makes it so much, it makes it fun. And whenever you can make something fun, you can learn it, you can fail and the failure is okay because you're still learning and you're not gonna, you're not gonna lose your mind in the process because it's fun. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a buddy of mine who he says it really well. He's like, you've got to be able to write the words to help people get paid and help people get laid. You got to <laughs> actually go out there and make those, the phones ring and the door swing. Yep. And it just exists between my ears. You can't do an ad to cart with me. You got to be able <laughs> to actually have me. And that's, that's what I love about that exclusivity that he sells to, uh, to folks because he's damn good at what he does. Right. Mm-hmm. So you had touched on the fact that you had to go through a little, I don't want to say entitlement, but that's, that's just the way that I describe it. I feel as if you're owed something without necessarily earning it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you said that you, you kind of went through that and didn't know that you even had, had that going on. What, what were we talking about? So the, the big thing about that was it wasn't necessarily in the sales aspect, but it was more about just like business and money and things. One of the, one of the things my mentor taught me was like the closer to reality you are, the more power you have currently. 
And I was not close to reality. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do this. And, you know, I'm going to make money because I'm going to be good at what I do. And, but you, you have to fail. You have to learn. You have to, it's all about the value that you provide, which will then in turn get you the finances that you want. And I just thought that, well, I have this. So I have this skill. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I deserve it, but it, it was, it was weird. There was a lot of my, my mindset from whenever I was in and whenever I got out and, and went through this like hell three years, <laughs> yep. but like complete shift. And, and yeah, entitlement is probably the number one entitlement, ego and pride are killers for whatever your dreams may be, because you cannot, you just cannot stretch your wings if you feel like, Oh, it's going to come to me anyway, because I deserve it. Yep. Well, I mean, it's like sitting in a, sitting in a garage, right. Saying that you're a car. Yeah, mm. Just because you happen to be in a garage and saying it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. As a matter of right. fact, if anybody were to walk by that particular garage and look in there and see you sat, talking to yourself, you'd, you'd look crazy. <laughs> and so again, to your point about being close to reality, uh, if you can, if you can re be realistic with yourself or a, a level set with yourself and a good mm -hmm. way to do that. And I, I don't want to assume here is to have, essentially open and authentic conversations with somebody who you respect, who's a little bit closer to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like you found some of that. Uh, yeah. Or how'd you, how'd you find this? Or is this the same guy that you were talking it's, about? It's the same guy. It's the same guy. Uh, it was crazy, crazy luck. Like nobody would have known. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you taking some time today and going through the process of not just finding a mentor, but the value of that particular mentor and what that did to help align Hey, listen, this is something I want to cover here. When you say three years of hell, think about one of the worst particular times that you had to, to pick yourself up and essentially keep going when you didn't believe that you could get it done and the work that you were doing wasn't producing the results that you were looking for. Walk me through a day where you, you realized either I, something, something's got to change. Right. What was it? Or... Was it, was it a, a certain length of time that you had to go through that process before you decided to change? Um, I think, let's see. I think the biggest thing was when it was just, it was really, really bad. Uh, it was like, so a thing in sales is it's all about enthusiasm and mindset. And if you get down in sales and it can really, really start spiraling out of control. And that's one of the things that happened. Cause it was like, Oh man, you know, I missed, I missed a sale and then, I missed another sale and then it just kept going down and kept going down. And then like, I wasn't making any money. Like it was a terrible time. I was broke as I've ever been broke. How did you survive? What did you do? Well, one of the things, one of my breakthroughs was actually the transitioning from trying to get sales in terms of making money and transitioning from that to making friends. I look at it like uh, in sales, you can chase a dog. If you chase a dog and let's say the dog is the sale, the money, um, the dogs think you're going to be playing with them. So he's just going to keep running away. But if you try and make a friend and you portray value and then the dog is going to come to you and that transition from like, I was getting like two sales a week in like my, my bad, my normal best weeks. And then I went to like a sale or two a day. It was like that perspective shift. You know, you fall, you go to rock bottom, nowhere you can go is butt up. So I'm grateful that that happened. Cause yeah, like whenever you're at the bottom, you really start to think, you are like, okay, I have to do this. How do I survive? And then you, you do or die. Like, <laughs> there you yeah. go. So the, it's, it's interesting the way that you uh, essentially just outlined and talked about, it's a nice way of saying that, honestly, you, think about that. You're going to be kicked out. You're not going to be able to pay for food. You're as close to other people not being able to take a bet on you, but you not being able to take a bet on you. Again. Right. You do work. You do the, the physical motion of putting forth effort. And yet the result that you're receiving is the exact opposite of what you're working for. And the only way to, and the only way to reverse it is to do more of it. And it's like, you're, you're constantly mired in this cycle of non-production, even though you're, you're doing, you're busy. It was like the equation that I was working with, I was putting effort into, into this equation was not getting the result. And so I kept thinking that I didn't think that I was doing something wrong. I thought that it was the other people. And so, you know, there it goes again, saying that I'm the victim of, you know, these other people. But then whenever I took, you know, I'm doing something wrong, then I adjusted the equation. So the work that I put into the equation then turned into the results. Isn't that funny how that works? 
Yep. <laughs> trying to circumvent the processes yep. is is not necessarily a good move. Cannot right? cannot find shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. You end up robbing yourself of the lesson yep. of failure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we had somebody who's uh, they're thirty two, I think thirty two or thirty three years old. They they had successfully sold the business to a much larger business, and they took a a, a role at this new company. And uh, and when you think about that, everybody who hears at least the 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 success, the result of the work that they're putting forth, they're like, oh my god, that's exactly what I want to be able to do. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to build a company, have somebody buy it, and oh my gosh, and then I can work for that particular company who bought me as I go and train and teach other people how to do exactly what I'm doing. That's you know, that's the American dream right there, right? I mean, cash out and you you move yep. on. And what they don't hear is they don't hear <laughs> the same person who produced that said, you actually rob yourself of really the only good thing about failure if you decide not to learn from the mm-hmm. mistakes that you make. So one, you have to be willing. You have to have, have an attitude of being willing to go out there and screw up and being perfectly okay <laughs> with looking like a buffoon. Hence, yep. the podcast. That's that's why we call it Knucklehead, not There we go. <laughs> Uh, and you know, Patrick's story is exactly that. He's he's got himself a, a scenario where now he's able to go out uh, and help other people utilize his skill set, and it's able to not only help him, but it helps other people, only because he he went through that process. And that's what I love about your story, Patrick. And that's that's one of the incredible things about your willingness to go out there and screw up and get punched in the mouth and realize you're not made of glass. Yep. So, um, with that being said, how can people get in touch with you? And then. And then on top of that, what, I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you do for folks? When people say write ads, they're like, are you kidding? I can go to, you know, some other type of geo arbitraged uh, thing over here and pay 10 cents on the dollar and go get it done. What makes you do it? Right. So, uh, so what I'm doing now, I'm trying to tackle every single aspect of marketing that, I mean, I've, I've experienced. And so organic local SEO, um, that's with one company that I do sales with and I, I pretty much run. And then I have my own organic marketing and, and sales consulting, which I'm still kind of building. And then of course I have another company which is doing completely ad campaigns, funnels, all of the fun stuff for advertisement and paid ads. To reach me, all of my social media is branded at P-T-R-K-B-U-R-T. So basically Patrick Burt. And I mean, typically how it goes is uh, I find people and, or they'll find me and they're like, Hey, I need help. And I'll be like, okay, cool. Let's address your problem. Let's see what you're facing. And then I will tailor a solution based on your needs, wherever it may be. The cool thing about us is you get me. So, and that's always fun. (laughs) Well, first of all, there's not a, there's not a a custom fit solution, right? So there's a lot of information that's out there. There's coursework. It's not a mystery anymore. We live in the information age. All it takes is, is somebody who's got some willingness to go out there and figure out a problem. First of all, find the problem and then find out what that problem means. So the magnitude of that particular problem to whomever it is that you're talking to, and then you go solve that problem, right? Or if you don't have a solution, you go find somebody for them to go help yep. them find the solution. But we live in the information age, so it's not a mystery anymore. However, it's not necessarily your, like I like it said, uh, I've liked it. I've liked the way that I've heard it, it's not a lack of resources. It's just a lack of resourcefulness. Yep. So what you get when you get Patrick is you get somebody who's been resourceful. They've proved to be even more resourceful for their clients. Uh, and that, that relationship as you go forward is, is meant to be pretty valuable for, for both of them. So uh, I appreciate you taking some time and, and outlying, uh, outlining how people can, can get in touch with you. So just real quick, recap it one more time. How do people get in touch with you? Pat? So how do you find me? Uh, at, P-T-R-K-B-U-R-T. That's literally all my social media. Um, you can find me through there. Uh, I have my own page. I have Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, like literally everything. Or you can find me through the podcast because I'm sure you'll be able to find a link there too. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It will be in the show notes. But for those of you who are uh, listening uh, listening to Knucklehead and, and you do like what you hear, Patrick just told you exactly how to get in touch with him. So before we sign off, anything else that you want to leave these folks with? I think the only thing is uh, you have to come to terms with the fact that you are going to fail. And the sooner that you can approach and come to terms with the reality that failure is inevitable and you say, okay, cool. How can I fail and learn from it? The farther you are going to, farther you're going to be in life. I mean, plain and simple. That's exciting. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear uh, what happens, not just with you, but with your business and your clients over the next few years and, uh, and seeing what happens. So, uh, for those of you who are in the local uh, Houston area, right, the greater Houston area, yep. 
Uh, you can get in touch with Patrick. For those of you who are outside of Houston, still get in touch with him. Test his tactics in your market. See, see how you can go put him to work, right? That's essentially what, what's cool about uh, this digital age. Is it yeah. doesn't matter where you're at. You can go and deploy tactics and see what happens and iteratively test and then iteratively make those changes to go continue to retest. And that's what's awesome. Exactly. So, exactly. All right. Well, Patrick, we appreciate you taking some time. For those of you who like listening to Knucklehead, listen, this podcast is brought to you by Knucklehead Promotions, right? And we've got a few sponsors that are out there. These got some people who uh, who like doing podcasting, like listening to themselves, themselves talk, but also understand that when they do talk, people listen. Maybe not everybody, but you don't want every single person to listen. You do want people who want what you have to say, though. Mm-hmm. And that's what's cool. That's what's, that's what's incredible about some of the services that Patrick brings to the table. But this particular podcast is brought to you by Knucklehead Promotions. We work tirelessly day in and day out to try to make sure that the people who listen to that get some value from it. There's more than just the learning lesson that you got from your failure. There's somebody out there who could listen to yours. So if you're interested in being a guest on the show, feel free to go to guests at Knucklehead Podcast. Submit your inquiry there. We are looking for about 10 more guests before the end of the year. However, we are lined out, so we can't promise that we're going to deploy it until you know November, December time. <laughs> right? But anyway, guests at knuckleheadpodcast.com. If you want to submit your inquiry, we'd love to chat with you and hear some of your stories. And for everybody who likes us in the Knucklehead Podcast, every Tuesday we come out with a new episode. We're on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. We're not on Snapchat, so don't judge. <laughs> But we, uh, we also are on Facebook, but we're our Knucklehead Promotions or Knucklehead Podcast on, across all those channels. You can always get in touch with me. So if you are listening and you're a service member, if you are listening and you're transitioning away from the military, uh, Patrick just described a scenario where there was three years of hell. For me, it was closer to 10, right? And there's a transition period. And it doesn't mean that you can't be productive in those windows, but it will mean that when you run into resistance and when you run into things that mess with your worth, you may make some pretty crappy choices or you may be in a a run in circles where there's some, there's some folks that have made some pretty crappy choices. My encouragement to you is Patrick and myself are available. If you're at that last little bit, like I couldn't believe it when somebody told me that they listened to one of our shows and it kept them from taking their life, connect with us. I mean, when we went through training, uh, like I like the way my buddy Chris Griffin says it, he's like, even if you are one of those blue Falcons, you still have the same set of morals, ethics, and values that we were trained. So we are brothers and sisters in arms. So Mm -hmm. connect with us uh, and then we'll go from there. So anyway, we appreciate you guys, Patrick. Thank you for taking some time and uh, we will see you soon. So everybody else, talk to you later.